want to talk about the knife of Phaedrus and being in touch with reality. If you ask any psychologist what schizophrenia is, they'll probably say something like, it's an individual who's out of touch with reality. And the reason this is important is because there are two brain areas. One is abstract, and so that not much in touch with reality, but apparently conscious. The other is very much in touch with reality, but supposedly unconscious. So if this is true, then we're all out of touch with reality and actually a little bit schizophrenic. So this first brain area is in the temporal lobe of the brain, and it has been called the what system because it gives labels, it identifies, it takes this integrated whole of reality and separates it into a bunch of separate things. And then in the art of motorcycle maintenance, we are met with this character Phaedrus and his tool, Phaedrus' knife, is described as cutting up the world into parts and then cutting those parts up into what eventually ends up with a world of its own making. And one of my favorite quotes from the book is how we take a handful of sand from the endless landscape of awareness around us and we call this handful of sand the world. And of course, what he meant by that is uh, the thing we think is the world is really our world. It's a, it's a small little abstract version of actual reality. And it can come in all kinds of different forms. I mean, some people, their handful of sand is politics. For other people, it's, um, you know, sports or how smart they are or shoes or, I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, your world can be really anything of your own making. But it's an abstraction and it's not necessarily in touch with reality. The other brain system is in the parietal lobe, and it's called the how system because it's about how we do things. And if we're going to get along in reality, we have to be very precise, so it's not abstract. Um, so when you reach out and grab something, you're using your parietal lobe. When you walk around, when you play sports. And the problem, well, not the problem, but uh, we see it as a problem, is that it doesn't have access to language. And so you may make the perfect shot, but you can't put it into words how you did it because... You can't put it into words. Most neuroscientists have condemned it to unconsciousness. In fact, one of the most famous neuroscientists going these days, V.S. Ramachandran, even came right out and said that if you shut down the what system, leaving the how system, um, it would seem like you're in a Martian art gallery. I mean, nothing would have any meaning. You might catch something if someone threw something to you. But without labels, without words, speaking of it as conscious would be uh, a moot point. And I think that's really important because if I've learned one thing about consciousness, it's that it's always not what it appears to be. Uh, consciousness is like a con artist. It's like an actor. It's always what it isn't. And so I want you to consider just for a moment that when you're out, when you're playing sports, when you're walking, breathing, when you're doing, maybe this is actual, real, true consciousness. And maybe it's the other what system that's actually faking it?